everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host Scott Ramp and I'm here to tell you all the wonderful things that are happening this week and weekend for your uh, August 25th episode of Wake Up Missoula starring me, Scott Ramp. Let's talk about some things. Um, I got some news items. Uh, the, uh, the haze and the uh, smoke is l maybe dying down now but it will pick up because, you know, reasons. The fire's still going on. It doesn't mean we're not going to have smoke. And I'll, have talk, I'll talk a little bit more about your air quality today later in the show. I got uh, another summer series uh, Friday Kids uh, produced video from our Boys and Girls Club. I got uh, pre-critic, I got uh, news, and I got weather. So let's kick some, th so kick, pff, kick some things off with some weather. If you notice, it was cool outside, um, and you actually went outside. It is cool outside. It is currently 52 degrees outside. You have a high of 82 degrees. There's going to be patchy smoke, and it's going to be sunny today. Um, tonight Tonight, they do expect things to be clear areas and then smoke, and then Saturday you can expect smokes to be basically filling up the Missoula area, but they don't have that graphic of the basically the LA landscape of the smoke and haze, so we might be fairly low, but who knows? Um, the smoke can blow in into the inversion that is Missoula, and we might have to deal with that. So later on this week, we'll have lows into the 50s and 40s with highs into the 90s, so there's going to be quite a big dip and drop uh, bopping and weaving when it comes to weather, but you guys uh, can expect all sorts of things to be happening this weekend, but I think you, everyone will be pretty much distracted through the smoke. So let's talk about some news items, and then we're going to talk about some of the areas of smoke in the state of Montana. So you and faculty um, fire, filed a grievance because they say the University of Montana violated its own policy when it notified lecturers, some who have taught full-time for many years, that they wouldn't have jobs coming the springtime. UM sent letters for some lecturers stating that their employment will be terminated at the end of the fall semester, but the union said that the letter failed to honor the, the right to, of lecturers to reappoint of uh, to uh, to a reappointment annually. So a lot of times the University of Montana when they have uh, their lectures for lecture series and do this and that, they usually have it w pretty much the whole year all lined up. So it's kind of uh, odd for the most part uh, to basically uh, cut them off like halfway through the the year the University of Montana school year summarized and in, in the statement said the U of M has violated its contract with the University Faculty Association its policy its pract its past practice and even its own notices of intent not to reappoint uh, necessitating this grievance on behalf of the of all university lecturers last school year the university counted 552 tenured or tenure track uh, faculty according to UM and ha it has fi 41 fewer tenure and tenure track uh, faculty this school year from buyouts and other departures and the administration plans to continue reduce spending on instructors uh, the original plan was to cut back a hundred of the faculty jobs for some of these employees who are tenured or on track to be tenured um, to help save money when there's the uh, the whole enrollment um, went down at the University of Montana, hence there was no students to go to said classes. So they're looking for ways to uh, buy out of uh, contracts and whatnot. So the union also noted that the president has a deadline of 10 working days to meet with uh, the these folks, and then another 10 days to resolve the matter. Uh, attribution. Uh, uh, Attribution. Uh, I got the I got the word uh, the first time, but now I can't say it since I'm live on TV. Uh, but of course, uh, the the thing can be resolved if parties don't settle the dispute in these 20 days. So they're they're working on it. Um, they're doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But here is another big thing that's happening nationally in terms of uh, the news. Uh, Texas um, is holding fast for uh, oncoming hurricane this morning. The hurricane is at category two. It's known as Hurricane Harvey, and it has uh, it's ushering a life-threatening storm surge, flooding upon landfall. Uh, uh, this early morning, uh, the National Hurricane um, Center said um, uh, as much as 35 inches are, uh, are are expected. The National Weather Service in Houston said, em employing daunting la language not seen by CNN experts since Hurricane Katrina, which left more than 1,800 people dead in 2005. 
Um, Harvey, the hurricane, now is a Category 2, is on track to be straightened to a Category 3 with winds of at at least 111 miles per hour by the time it makes landfall across uh, Corpus Christi, forecasters say. The storm is then expected to stall, broadening the flood threats to Texas and the south. So that's kind of what's happening in the nation. Um, uh, me and the Gulf of Mexico is a great hub for uh, hurricanes and whatnot. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's the only place in the world that has hurricanes. All the other places are typhoons and whatnot on the other side of the ocean, on the other, o on the, uh, on the other ocean. So moving on, let's talk about some of the air qualities that are happening in and around the state of Montana. If you guys look at the map, it's looking a lot better than it has. There's, um, gray usually means there's no data. Um, but as you can see, uh, we're in the moderate stages. It has gone down since last night um, from the unhealthy for sensitive groups. It is hazardous up in Sealy Lake, but you can. But most of this area looks like it's pretty nice. Um, if we take a look at Missoula especially, you can see that it went down from last night. Um, it's looking fairly good for today, but it's um, expected to go up later on this weekend as well. So. Um, let's uh, throw it to some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. We have a bunch of new programs happening from uh, um, ASAP Campus Forum. We got uh, a couple uh, Mansfield Brown Bag Lecture Series on here as well. And we have uh, the Southwestern Asia Conference, Asian Conference that w was recorded just this last spring. So uh, here's all the little highlights of the new programs. When we come back, we're going to talk about some new movies that are coming out this weekend. Yes, there are new movies, and I looked at them, and this is this. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Anybody can participate. You won't have the pre-populated data that's going to come from the central source. So part of your job is to go to the data validation site and to start looking at the data for your unit and sending feedback to Don about how you can drill down to the programmatic level for academic programs and administrative services uh, to get the data that you need that will be populated in the form come the fall. Then you have the opportunity to do a draft answer of all of the qualitative metrics, submit that form. We're going to choose six programs, or I'm sorry, six reports, that'll be three academic programs, three administrative services at range. Is there study of traditional ecological knowledge out there in other places in China? Actually, when we talk about ecological, it's not only about ecological, it actually is about social and culture. They have very stable social and cultural institutions. That is the basic line to protect the ecological. If we, just you mentioned, cultural revolution, they destroyed the institutions. So most of, most of villages that, like this, the culture just, just, just disappeared. Communicating. And I, I felt guilty. I wish I had known more Japanese when I was there um, to try to make more of an effort. And I think that's something I definitely try to do when I go back because people are so willing to um, talk with us and communicate. Um, so that was really great. Um. I guess something that kind of surprised me was the connection that the people had to um, historical monuments such as the um, Kumamoto Castle. I was talking to, uh, we went, when we went to the dinner at the um, German restaurant, um, I was sitting next to um, a woman and she described to me um, how a lot of people after the earthquake went to the castle and just wept at the destruction. Um, just. As a, as a community, they just all came together and just mourned. In talking about what, who gets the benefit of these critical rights to equality and fairness under the law, they deliberately chose, they talked about first, birthright citizenship. If you were born here, and this was eventually uh, confirmed by the Supreme Court um, with respect to uh, a, a Chinese immigrant, the son of Chinese immigrants named Wong Kim Ark, that if you're born here, you become a citizen. Right? It was originally passed over rule Dred, Squat, Dred Scott and, and um, provide citizenship to um, the freed slaves. But if you're born here, you're a citizen. But they went beyond that. And they said, that it, you're a citizen, and you have certain privileges and immunities. But then they said that no state shall deprive any person um, of um, life, liberty, or property without due process, or deny any person equal protection of the laws. Person, not citizen. That was a deliberate choice. Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some new movies that are going to be coming out this week. We're kicking things off with 
just a just a uh, warning. This is based on a true story, so that means um, it's complete hogwash. And I say this because most of the time when they say it's based on a true story, it has nothing to do with the source material. So just to let you guys know. But um, I have to say hogwash because it's on TV and I can't say anything else, which I want to do. But of course, this okay. So here's the synopsis: the tiny church has been ordered to shut down, and a group of refugees from Southeast Asia. Together, they risk everything to plant seeds for a future that might just save them all. All Saints is what the new movie's called. Stars a group of actors you've never heard of in a movie you probably will never see unless it's on Lifetime or Hallmark. The new another Bruce Lee uh, biopic. Uh, if it if it isn't ha his movies that. Uh, is hyped up. It's basically people who hype him up. There's um, Bruce Lee. Uh, of course, while Bruce Lee went on to be more serious roles, and it, it, for me, it's always kind of been between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, because in terms of like how I think of their skills and whatnot, and they kind of went off their separate ways. One went more of the comedy route. One went more of the dramatic route. Um, but basically, um, anyways, um, I just looked at uh, the synopsis, and apparently this movie <laughs> is a remake. I have n no idea why I even said biopic, but as soon as I saw the uh, picture, I was like, Birth of a Dragon, that sounds like a biopic, but apparently it is an actual remake of one of Bruce Lee's movies, um, starring a, an actor I've never heard of in a movie that basically uh, promotes uh, kung fu movies. And, I mean, there hasn't been a huge market for kung fu movies in America for a while, but it is a kung fu movie which a lot of people can really get into and, hey, I love kung fu movies. I have really nothing to say too bad about this, but uh, they're still making a kung fu movie. But the probably the worst part about this is the fact that it's a remake. Moving on. Not what the poster implies, um, as you can see. It's, I, I see, like, two kids, like, jumping and, like, leaping. It's like, are they trying to fly or something? But apparently it follows a young girl who is trying to be a ballerina. Um, in the tough world of ballet, in this animated movie about the peak of ballet's power and influence in the world. Uh, it's not Pixar, just so you guys know, it's not Pixar. Uh, even though it wants to be like every other movie that is kind of like CGI animated, blah, blah, blah. But not being an animationist or anything, but yeah, pretty much it. You know, like, you know, Pixar pretty much has it on lock with these kind of movies. Um, the movie stars Elle Fanning, um, the little sister of Dakota, um, as a voice, and Mel Brooks, who is still alive. It's a voice as well. Uh, this is uh, not Black Swan, uh, just so you guys know. So expect the glamour of ballet, but also it's a movie. T uh, so basically, learn nothing about <laughs> the actual uh, ballet as well. So that's kind of what's happening for all the new movies that are coming out. I have a a similar movie I I did with some of the kids from the Boys and Girls Club called Get Bob Five. If you haven't seen one through four, you may need to tune out right now. So here is Get Bob Part Five, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council. Hey, it's sunshine. Oh my gosh, Bob. Hey, it's Bob. What the heck is Bob? He's my friend. Yay. Can I have him? Well. Ever since the first movie, everyone's been after Bob. <laughs> what is that, Bob? It's the bag of the I think he wants me to take him. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> We have to get Bob! Phew! That was a close one! Oh my... Hey, isn't that... Hey, Bob. Isn't that that one guy's hat? Oh, come on! Let's look. He's not there. What? Bob's gone! Oh no! We gotta get Bob back! He's our only hope! Get Bob! Oh, we, we lost him! Wait, listen. Shh, Bob, shh. Uh, I think we should go this way. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. I heard that you're the best detective. Yep, I sure am. Maybe we should give you the hat. It has a little tracking device on it, and so does Bert, and so does Bob. Here. Thanks. 
Aren't you gonna do like detective stuff? Um, what the heck? Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. They don't see us. Hmm. Why can't I they can be? Sense them. They're close by. Hmm. Where should they be? They should be close by. Do you think they'll ever find us? I hope they don't find Bob. Hey, Bob, how are you? What are you not Bob there? He's really changed since he discovered YouTube. YouTube's not great, but it's good and bad. Haha, -ha, we found you! We found you! Where's Bob? Um, he went back to outer space. Space? Space? Really? <coughs> uh huh. That's ridiculous. Shouldn't you use your detective work to find Bob? Uh, sure. That's here. Hmm. Well, hey. you better make this. Um, wait a minute. Should I get my hat back? Uh, no. That was a close one, Bob, right? Bob, Bob! You lost Bob! For, um, uh, nothing? Um, uh, mm, my friend Bob. What does he look like? Um, he's black, he has black hair, he's short, he smiles a lot, he looks like a bird. Looks like a bird? Um, I gotta go. Hmm. I thought you were detecting. Why aren't you detecting Bob? I am. I'm detecting Sass, too. I'm detecting you guys aren't looking for a thing named Bob and eats like a bird. What's it to you? You're looking for a certain something, and I may know a certain somebody who's looking for him. I don't get it. The guy that had Bob doesn't know where Bob is anymore. Oh! But how does that help us find Bob? It doesn't. Slight pinch. Ah! I need help. Uh, I need help. My friend Bob is gone. Uh, well, I can help. Can I help too? Hmm. Okay. Are you gonna finish my brain surgery? Oh, uh, we can fix it on the way. Don't worry. When is this brain surgery going to be done? I came here, in here with a broken finger, and now I get brain surgery. Do you think I should be out here with all the germs and stuff? Listen, I'm a doctor. Trust me. How is this going to help us find Bob? Nothing like an old search party to find an alien or something. Ha! Ah! Ah! We found you! Ha! You're going to die! We're gonna find Bob. We're gonna find him first. He's gonna be ours! And there's nothing gonna, you can do about it. But first you have to find Bob. The power of good always wins after evil. It's scientifically proven. Is it that Bob over there? Yes, Bob? Bob has to go back to outer space. Aww. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.
I did. I thought you were a detective. <laughs> Why aren't you a detective? <laughs> He's my bad. All right, back up. <laughs> All right, <What's> and <coughs> action. I forgot what you say. <laughs> uh, what do I say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> Throw him. <laughs> and you can do about it. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, let's talk about some city council. So uh, the city of Missoula, uh, this is during the um, parks and conservation, uh, emphasizing on conservation. They were talking about uh, hiring a new employee to be on their energy and climate team. And they're doing, and of course, Ben Schmidt, who is the, with the um, climate, uh, energy and climate team, was talking about some of their current projects that are in place. So here is Ben Schmidt. The one thing that we're really working on right now or looking into is uh, a stretch building code. State law does allow local jurisdictions to have a stretch building code, but it has to be based not on uh, requirements, but rather incentives. Um, and we found out through Dale Horton, I don't know if any of you know him, but we've just met him. Um, he's been working on trying to get a multi-city stretch building code going to give it some consistency and some strength across the straight, uh, excuse me, across the state. Um, there are two different types here. I'm not going to go into great detail. Uh, I'm not a constructor or builder of any kind, so I will leave that to other people. But they're basically two types. One's prescriptive, which says you will do things this way, and the other is preferred performance related, which sometimes uses software to gauge, has this building achieved a certain percentage above the base energy code or energy use requirements of a building. All right, so uh, that was Ben Schmidt, and uh, it's in the preliminary stages, and they're trying to figure out a way to come up with a policy, not only for Missoula, but for the state for uh, ba basic energy conservation for future buildings and also updating of current buildings that are existing. Uh, during the meeting of Parks and Conservation, they were interviewing candidates to fill spot, as I said before, um, the energy and climate team in Missoula. Here's uh, Brian Von Losberg. Um, reflecting on bit what Ben was talking about. Um, some significant interest from constituents citywide um, in the city's it's kind of heartening in the city's um, conservation and climate action plan, particularly since um, the president withdrew the country from the Paris Accord, and it's um, spun I think some you know great brainstorming and, and interest. Um, particularly, one thing that comes to mind that people have mentioned is what we might be able to um, work on with Northwestern Energy relative to the energy supply that Missoula, you know, gets. So not to dive into that topic now, but it's something that um, I'm particularly interested in. I'm guessing others on this committee are interested in, and, and there is some interest out in the public um, that I hadn't seen uh, sort of as much of before. And so I, I mentioned all that uh, because I think it would be good for us, and I will work with you, Ben, to figure out how to kind of structure it with the committee um, to, to maybe get that on the committee's radar, the energy and climate team's radar, um, some of that brainstorming, because uh, I think the folks that are on that group could, could help us maybe with some um, productive direction or, or thinking along those lines so all right so uh, that was Brian von, uh, Brian von Losberg talking about how he is for this um, initiative moving forward to come up with a um, basically an energy saving um, costs by also uh, basically having guidelines because um, one of the things that they were talking about in the meeting is some of the difficulties when it comes to uh, having um, building codes so each community and everything has their own bu building codes there's not like a there's not like a big there is a there is basically a state building code for the most part but it's very just like very broad and not centralized but what they're trying to do is they, they want to maybe hopefully through this meeting because this was basically kind of an update they were just talking about it there's nothing really going forward so this is more of a discussion thing that i just kind of found in the middle of a meeting that they were basically appointing someone new to the meeting and they really got into it and i uh, I very and I was like, huh, this is interesting. So here's Julie Armstrong. She talks about the frustration some people have when moving forward on energy savings in the form of building codes. So this is Julie Armstrong. 
hearing the same thing from residents that since the state incentives kind of went away, that they are really looking for um, a way to, they would love to put PV on their homes, the residential homes, but the incentives aren't there right now for them. So I don't know if there's, there's a coalition or an initiative that the group could form that would enable Missoula specifically to get a set of incentives or financial incentives. I know people are yeah. clamoring for that right now. All right, so um, so w in response to Julie Armstrong, there is a federal um, incentives for people who do conservation, but uh, but according to Brian Vallosberg, the federal incentives for solar power will go down after three years or so, um, based on the current administration. Uh, ben Schmidt talks about what the city can do with the current um, county and beyond. Well. And again, I think one of the keys to this being successful maybe uh, is hopefully talk to this Dale Horton who is looking more statewide and, and try to get some coordination there. Uh, again, I think that will give it strength uh, if it's more than just a Missoula initiative that we do. Uh, and I do think there are some key groups that need to be involved. Obviously, we need the city building department involved. I mean, they would be key. In, you know, they're the ones who do the inspections and things like that. Uh, uh, the other group that need to be involved is Northwestern Energy, since that is the energy provider for Missoula. And my experience with them is they're they're totally behind energy efficiency initiatives, and so hopefully we can keep some players in the in, involved. Um, so one of the things, just uh, from my own memory, is that a month or so ago, um, Bozeman got a huge federal grant to basically build a wind and solar type farm for figuring out um, alternative energy sources as well. But I don't know if that's going to be in direct competition with Northwestern Energy. So that's a, one thing that you can look at. But of course, if you want to see this whole meeting, you can look it up on CI. .missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can find out upcoming meetings, how you can get involved with the city of Missoula government, and how you can get involved with committees. And if you have any ideas and suggestions for the energy and climate team, they are more than welcome to take it. And to get in contact with the city of Missoula, you can contact the county clerk, Marty Rabine, at, at City Hall. So um, up next, we got some um, events, but here is, let's see, let's... Mm -hmm. Let's just uh, let's just skip to some events right now. There is uh, definitely a lot of stuff happening, and I just kind of want to get into it and right through it. Um, starting Friday is the River City Roots Festival. Um, starting at 11 a.m. until about 5 p.m. Um, the uh, ki there's going to be a kids table, a kids fair at the at Karis Park, and MCAT was, is going to be there um, with our very own Jack Catmull, um, Justin. Um, completely forgetting his last name at the top of my head but anyways they're going to be there and then we're going to be running a vr system there as well which vr stands for virtual reality and uh we're going to be offering it for uh families for free and it's going to be a great opportunity uh, last couple of years what we've done in the past was we had an audio visual ride through the space taxi this way it's more like um basically in the short it's like we strap tvs to your uh your face and you move around and interact with a 3d environment so that's kind of what's happening there but let's go back and let's talk about some of the uh, other events that are happening on friday besides the uh, river city roots festival and then i'll talk more about the river city Res roots festival as it pops up um family fun time at mismo gymnastics um it's for anybody walking to 12 years of age who want to do some family fun in a safe um squishy foam pit filled um gymnasium where kids do some flips and stuff and it's great it starts at 9 30 this morning pretty much right now um, it, but of course, if you've seen this afternoon, it's too late. But they usually have it, an open gym for the most time, 9.30 to 11 a.m. most days. Um, it's $7, and it's $10 for non-members. Um, youth Book Festival, Missoula Public Library, Library is doing a Youth Book Festival. It's their third year of doing this. It features interactive workshops and presentations for children aged 12 and under, as well as teens 13 through 19 years of age. Um, they'll be doing all sorts of things. They're going to be at the large meeting room, boardroom, dragon rug, and the teens um, book section as well. Well, uh, 12th annual River City Roots Festival starts at 11 a.m. I told you I'd get back to it. Uh, downtown Missoula, uh, they're, they're basically walking off the hip strip, Ryman, and Main Street. So if you're going down Main Street, you're going to have to be rerouted. Um, it, most of it's blocked off. There'll be a lot of porta potties there. There's going to be a lot of beer. So basically, uh, it's a way for people to basically have open containers outside in this designated area for people to listen to music and whatnot. And it's a great day because uh, the smoke is not too bad. It's going to be moderate. So you can have families out there as early as today, um, especially with the uh, Kids Festival. 
Uh, but that's kind of what's happening. They're going to have so many headliners. Uh, the John Jorgensen Bluegrass Band tonight. And uh, then there's Anders Osborne. It's going to be Saturday night. Those are the headliners. Uh, this is uh, free f for the public. Uh, the amenities and beer and all that stuff costs money. So that's what's going to happen there. So Family Fun, again, starts at 11. It's going to go on about the same time. But it's mostly going to be mostly happening during the day for a lot of day activities for families and kids alike to do all sorts of fun things. Uh, Zach's going to be there, and Zach usually does a lot of face paintings with the kids and whatnot. It starts at 1 p.m., so that's going to be great. Stories in your own backyard with Kier Graf is going to be at the Missoula Public Library. So if you want to get inside and get away from the smoke, you guys can walk on down to the Missoula Public Library. And you, as part of the library's third annual youth book festival, Kier as he does a short dramatic reading, a slideshow of weird and wacky real life houses, and rapid fire stump the author Q&A. And an exercise in how all of us can use our own lives as a rich material um, to create writings. Writing Beyond Fear with Jake Halpern is going to be at Missoula Public Library at 3.30 p.m. A nationally known author brings his talent and pizzazz to the workshops during the Missoula Public Library um, Book Festival. And they have uh, it's going to be from 3.30 to 5.30 at the lar in the large meeting room. Um, you got Hindu style puja and kirta music at uh, OAO Temple House uh, this Friday uh, at starting at 5.15 p.m. The community will be observing a beautiful garnish uh, church tree, uh, so I'm butchering all this, holiday as part of a 10-day Indian festival of Ganesh. Um, the term, um, the term uh, Chaturshthi uh, refers to the fourth day of any, uh, after any given new moon. This uh, particular day belongs exclusively, exclusively to Lord uh, Ganapti and celebrates th his mythical birthday. This is one of the most beloved events of the year from this, from this group, and the key themes of this festival are joy, abundance, and love on all levels. And it starts at 515 at the OAO Temple House. Um, Family Friendly Friday is at the Top Hat Lounge, so if you want to get indoors after the River City Roost Festival and enjoy some family fun with kids running around while you maybe uh, tie one off, you guys can do that at the Top Hat Lounge at 6 p.m. Uh, Boys and Girls Club Family Fun Concert. Boys and Girls Club are basically kicking off the end of their summer programs at 6 p.m. at Karis Park. Uh, MCAT will also be there doing some VR stuff as well, so we've been um, working with some of the kids from the Boys and Girls Club last three weeks at MCAT. Today is the last day, and we're going to be uh, doing all sorts of wonderful things. Um, uh, last day of Chris Pepin Ghost Images at the Missoula Art Museum. That's happening Saturday morning, but I want to talk about it now because I'm going to be showing you an art clip from his exhibit. Um, it's called Ghost Images, and it's by Chris Pepin at the Missoula Art Museum Gallery, and this is going to be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and this is your last chance to check out the art. But here is a nice little tease of the art, And but when I come back, I'll talk about all your Saturday events, including some more stuff about the River City Roots Festival. And that was Ghost Images by Chris Pepin, and that's going to be ending tomorrow at the Mizzou Art Museum. So you have one more chance to check it out today and tomorrow until 5 p.m. on Saturday. So speaking of Saturday, let's talk about some Saturday stuff. 
the uh, Missoula's Farmer's Market is still happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And this is good because you should guys should go, go check it out. You guys can probably go like at 10 a.m. And then you guys can join the uh, River City Roots Festival Family Fun Day at the Roots Festival. And yeah, as soon as I come on the air, my nose gets all itchy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, calling all families as part of the 12th annual uh, uh, River City Roots Festival, the Family Fun Fest will have dozens of family fun activities, MCAT too, um, and performances to enjoy on family on Friday and Saturday. Enjoy performance by Animal Wonders, uh, Child Bloom Guitar, The Salamanders, even Disney's Magic, sh Evan Disney's Magic Show. Um, it's spelled even for some reason. Um, activities will be provided by Big Sky Breakout, Championship Training, Dysfunction Junction, um, Ceramic Studios, MCAT and many more local organizations. A full schedule of performances and activities can be at RiverCityRootsFestival.com. CFAC, Open House, Community Food and Agriculture Coalition. Join the uh, Community Food and Agricultural Coalition after the Farmer's Market on Saturday uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for an open house celebrating the new home at 328 East Main Street in Missoula. They have free scones and a golden yolk ice cream. Fast focused art. So if it's going to be on Main Street, you're pretty much going to be right there if you're at the River City Ridge Festival. You can't miss it. Um, there's quilting class, Fancy Fox at the Confident Stitch. I don't. I'm, I'm very just like I'm not really confident when I say the Confident Stitch. Um, Elizabeth Hartman is known for her whimsical quilt patterns featuring the favorite forest animals. This class will introduce you to the fancy fox, a handsome creature who many of you or may not wear uh, spectacles um, glasses. Um, Kimberly Hardwick will take will walk with you through the pieces with her with your own fancy fox so you will leave with a finished baby quilt top or wall hanging measurements 30 by 36. Sewing experience is advised. No quilting experience required. Um, there's uh, the more Roots Festival. Wiz Pop is going to the River City Roots Festival, uh, kicking it off at 12 uh, noon 30, as I call it. Um, the Wiz Pops are an award winning band of uh, teaching artists and musicians from Missoula, Montana, with a track record of releasing award winning science based music. And this is tailored to uh, kids um, of all ages, but also it's a nice little fun way for adults to um, enjoy some cool music and original music by a nice little family friendly band. It's called the Wiz Pops. It starts at 12.30 p.m. and I'm all for them. Um, Cozy with Bad Guys and Susan Adrian and Trent Reedy at Missoula Public Library. They, uh, they're talking about villains are complex. Um, contradictory, sometimes even sympathetic, and are often at the heart of a truly gripping narrative arc. As part of Missoula Public Library's Youth Book Festival, they're described as the approaches as a home that helps us create some uh, credible villainy together. And this happens from 2.30 to 4 p.m. in the boardroom. So, um, And right after that, they're going to do Who's the Hero? Um, who's villain um, with Janet Fox? What really makes a hero and a villain? Which one would you rather read about? Are villains truly all bad, or can they be heroes too? As part of Missoula Public Library's third annual book festival, well, they do this a lot. Um, there's a lot of this going on here as well. So that's they're going to be talking about that from 4 to 5 p.m. What will make a hero, what makes a villain, antagonist, protagonist, all that stuff. Because you can still be a villain and a protagonist. Uh, Ghost, P Ghost of Paul Revere at S River City Roost Festival, born on the banks of Saker River, brothers in all but name the ghost of paul revere is maine's uh holer folk band a powerful energetic non-traditional american folk band that's renowned for harmony fueled heart pounding performance full of songs and unique identities it's at 4 30 p.m downtown missoula during the river city Roots festival ice skating is back at glacier ice rink fairs over the ice has been frozen up again now it's time for some ice skating 6 p.m glacier ice rink you can go up inside. Admission is $6 for adults, $4 for youth. Um, skate rentals are $3. Um, yeah, get inside, get stay cool, um, stay away from the smoke, and do some ice skating. Uh, I wanted to um, throw this one up here. There's always a, a great movie that happens at the Roxy Theater, but this one is something that really like struck out to me. Um, struck out? No, that really... Uh, highlighted. So it's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, it's KK from... OS. Um, join every Saturday night for the finest cultist flicks in Missoula has to offer. Once a month, they will let uh, they will let you, the community, help decide what the next movie's lineup will be. Screenings may include special giveaways and surprise double features. When here's the um, synopsis of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. When teenagers Mike and Debbie see a comet crash outside their sleepy small town, they investigate and discover a pack of murderous aliens who look very much like circus clowns. They try to warn the authorities, but everyone assumes their story is a prank. Meanwhile, the clowns set about harvesting and eating as many people as they can. It's not until they kidnap Debbie 
Debbie, Debbie, that Mike decides it's up to him to stop the clown's bloody rampage. And that's happening at the Roxy that night. Here are some of your music events that are happening for the week. There's a lot happening in here. Uh, there's Zach Rock Camp, which will be performing at the River City Ridge Festival in the afternoon at 1 p.m. A lot of bands that are kid-driven, and basically they bring a lot of kids together for the rock camp. Even our own Jack Catmull um, did it. I'm pointing that because he's like right over there playing video games or whatever but anyways uh he you know there uh the zach has rock camps for boys and girls they started out with girls rock camp then they branched out to just a general rock camp for everybody and uh and then they have a performance so the river city Risk festival is when they perform they basically get together this week learn a song and then they play it for the river city Risk festival and that starts at 1 p.m i don't want to give a little highlight for that because it's one of the more popular ones that are happening there as well um friday night as well is happening um Country Boogie Boys, the Sunrise Saloon, Jones Zen Band, um, and then of course River City Roots Festival after party at 9:45 p.m. at uh, BFW. Um, Saturday, here's some uh, late night music events are happening. Anders Osborne, as I said, is one of the headliners at the Downtown Missoula River City Rest Festival. Absolutely with Chris Moon. The Shiver at Union Club, a karaoke by Kaleidoscope at VFW Bar. Nightliner is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. So there's going to be a lot of bands happening in and around the Missoula area. And you guys can find it all by going to the RiverCityRootsFestival.com for more information. You can also go to MissoulaEvents.net. Here is a... A uh, nice little website you guys can also go to, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can find out the full episode of Wake Up Missoula, past episodes, past interviews, past cool little videos we've done. Uh, summer series, uh, Get Bob Part 5 will be uploaded as well. I suggest you watch Dub and Stuff, Rage at Dawn. It's one of my favorite ones that I've made thus far. You can go to MCAT.org for more information about what MCAT is doing and what MCAT will be up to coming up this fall. Uh, our summer camps are pretty much done and all our uh, uh, summer kids programs are wrapping up today and then we'll be transitioning into our uh, basically a fall sports casting so I'll talk a little bit more about sports casting as uh, we get into it next week so uh, I want to thank you all for joining me and I hope you guys have a safe weekend it is River City Roots Festival and there's a lot of uh, going to be a lot of drinking in the downtown Missoula area especially being out and about so you want to stay uh, be good <laughs> basically what I'm, trying, what I'm trying to say and also be aware that the smoke will be uh, coming back with a vengeance maybe tonight and tomorrow so you guys may need to watch out for some of that smoke stuff um, if you need to wear a mask you can get masks pretty much anywhere um, on the top of my head Walmart is a good place to get it but once again thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramp. have a great weekend and I will see you on Wednesday <laughs>